Hello, I am Jody Wolf. You're watching Exposed on April 3rd, 2011. And uh, it's 11.56 p.m. in Birmingham, Alabama. Today's topic, the joys of being a Muslim woman. And uh, I think this is really important. Uh, I've studied it, and they're trying to remove this information as quickly as they can, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and read it to you. Mm -hmm. This lady was born in Egypt as a Muslim, and uh, this is not hearsay, and it will scare the life out of you. Her name is Noni Darwish. In the Muslim faith, a Muslim man can marry a child at the age of one and have sexual intimacy with her, with a child. He consummates marriage by the time she is nine years old. The dowry is given to the family in exchange for the woman who becomes a slave and for the purchase of her private parts of a woman to use as a toy. I'm, I'm reading to you exactly what it says, y'all. Even though a woman is abused, she cannot obtain a divorce to prove rape. The woman must have four male witnesses. Good luck. Often after a woman has been raped, she's returned to her family, and the family must return the dowry, and the family has the right to execute her as an honor killing. To restore the honor of the family, husbands can beat their wives at will, and he does. And he does not have to say why he has beaten her. The husband is permitted four wives and a temporary wife for an hour or so. Of course, a prostitution. The Sharia Muslim law controls the private as well as the public life of the woman. In the West, America, Muslim men are starting to demand Sharia law, and I've been mentioning this, y'all, so that the wife cannot obtain a divorce and he can have full and complete control of her. It is amazing and alarming how many of our sisters and daughters attending American universities are now marrying Muslim men in submitting themselves and their children unsuspectingly to the Sharia law. We must enlighten our sons and daughters, our American women, to avoid becoming slaves under Sharia law. This is ripping the West in two. Miss Darwish said the goal of radical Islamic is to impose Sharia law on the world, whipping, ripping the United States and liberty in two. Cruel and unusual punishment, the terrifying goal impl implications of Islamic law. Darwish was born in Cairo and spent her childhood in Egypt. And at age eight in 1978, she immigrated to the United States. Her father died while he was leading convert attacks on Israel. He was a high-ranking Egyptian military officer stationed with his family in Gaza. When he died, he was considered a shahid, a martyr for jihad. His posthumous status earned Darwish and her family an elevated position in the Muslim society. At an early age, Miss Darwish questioned her own Muslim culture and upbringing. She converted to Christianity after hearing a Christian preacher on television. And I think that was Pat Robertson. Um, Darwish also warns about creeping Sharia law, what it is, what it means, and how it's manifested in Islamic countries. For the West, she says radical Islam, Islamists are working to impose Sharia on the world. If this happens, the USA will be destroyed. Westerners generally 
assume all religions encourage a respect for the dignity of each individual. Islamic law, Sharia, teaches that non-Muslims should be conformed or killed in this world. Peace and prosperity for one's children is not important as assuring that Islamic law rules everywhere in the Middle East and eventually in the world. While the United States thinks that all religions encourage some form of the golden rule, Sharia teaches two systems of ethics, one for the Muslims, one for the non-Muslims. Building on tribal practices of the 7th century, Sharia engages or encourages the side of humanity that wants to take from and impose onto others, while Westerners, United States, tend to think in terms of religious people, developing a personal understanding of and relationship with God, Sharia advocates executing people who ask difficult questions that could be interpreted as criticism. It's hard to imagine that in this day and age, Islamic scholars agree that those who criticize Islam or choose to stop being Muslim should be executed. Sadly, while talk of an Islamic reformation is common and even assumed by many of the West, in the West rather, such murmurings in the Middle East are silenced through intimidation. While Westerners are accustomed to an increase in religious tolerance over time, Darwish explains how oil dollars are being used to grow an extremely intolerant form of political Islam in her native country, Egypt, and elsewhere. In 20 years, there'll be enough uh, enough. Muslim voters in the U.S. to elect a president by themselves. Rest assured, they'll do it. You can look at how they have taken over several towns in the U.S.A., such as Dearborn, Michigan. They own it, and there are others. I think everyone in the U.S. should be required to hear this, but the ACLU, there's no way this will be widely publicized unless you pass this blog to others. Too bad that so many are disillusioned with life and Christianity to accept Muslims as peaceful. Some may be, but they have an army that is willing to shed blood in the name of Islam. The peaceful support the warriors with their finances and own kind of patriotism to their religion. While America is getting rid of Christianity from all public sites and erasing God from the lives of children, the Muslims are planning a great jihad on America, either by consent or by conquest. Every experience God gives us, every person he puts in our lives, is the perfect preparation for the future he can only see. Very disturbing. Very. Pay attention to it. This was written by a Muslim woman who got sick and tired of seeing the brutality, the hatred, and the murder of innocent young women, young girls, and the rape and the pedophiles that's going on with one-year-olds and five-year-olds and nine-year-olds throughout the Muslim world where Sharia law says it's okay. Impose it where you want. It's yours. They have to fall either by consent or by conquest. Jody Wolf, Exposed.